I fight because I know in my heart that this is what I'm supposed to do. That anything else I do aside from this, I might thrive, I might do okay at, but my light shines brightest when I do what I'm meant to do. And this right now is exactly what I'm meant to do. When I originally started martial arts, it's no surprise to anybody that knows me, I started with jiu-jitsu. Uh, I was in fourth grade. I was a kid with a lot of energy, a lot of emotions, you know, which those two in combo usually mean bad news when you're in those developmental years. So it was just an outlet before to kind of deal with those things in a constructive manner. I was introduced to Miguel Torres, who was my coach at the time. We were at the Hammond Civic Center. If you're from the area, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. He was fighting a guy named Joe Pearson. He had ran across the ring and he had hit a flying triangle. And I had been practicing jiu-jitsu before that, and, but there's levels to it, obviously. So the level he was operating at was like far behind my comprehension. So it was just, he looked like a ninja to me. Talking to my family, they had told me that he was from East Chicago, Indiana, which is a similar town to where I'm from, which is Harvey, Illinois. So I had seen someone with similar circumstances and similar upbringing to me, doing what they wanted to do, really just pursuing their dreams. I had fell in love with it, fell in love with the idea, and, and I wanted it for myself. You know, we've been in business for over 20 years. Now I got a kids wrestling program. We run an MMA program. But, you know, we we don't have 100 students. We don't have you know. But you know, my primary focus is is trying to take these guys to the next level in professional MMA. I want to have like-minded guys around here that look and push and to train each other, be there for each other. That everyone's going through the same grind every day. Everyone's you know they watch the UFC and they see that everything looks all glorious and stuff like that. But you know, when it's a Tuesday and it's five below outside, you know, trying to get in here. Then when you have six, seven other training partners, that's kind of, hey, let's go, we're all training today. Let's get together. You know, we all have the same goal in mind. And I think Jose coming in with, you know, with his background and he's so technical and he sews and he breaks everything down so well. And it's like the, the thought process and just seeing him thinking and working and training, he, he applies that to everything. If you meet his family, you meet his kids, you meet everybody, like you see like the detail and effort that he puts into everything from being a father to training to helping out at the gym and to bring that in here and showing some of these younger guys, hey, I can work a full-time job. I got kids, I'm married and stuff like that. And I can still come in here and train at a high level and compete at a high level. That's, you know, and it's like, that's life. You know, you gotta go in there and be able to take these obstacles and then go forward and just and succeed. And that's good for him to show everybody. And I think he learned that he found other guys that could help him attain this goal and then they're all going at it together. Even though now I'm turned professional, you know, it's kind of the same story as the amateur career. It's not uh, financially sustainable to just have just be a regional fighter. Every Monday after my fights, I report back to my job at U-Haul. I work for the repair shop. Shout out my boss, John. He always gives me the days off when I need it for fights and whatnot. And I told him from the gate when I originally got hired that, look, I'm a fighter. That doesn't mean I'm a hard ass. It just means that I'm nuts and I'm trying to pursue something. And that kind of divides my time up a little crazy, you know, and, and kind of robs my daughters of time that they also, you know, deserve. You got three shifts. One shift is spent sleeping. Another shift is spent at work and then another shift is split between travel to the gym and getting home so there's not a lot of extra time for my daughter so this is again a time restraint thing so that's why i am operating at the pace that i'm operating at this is why i'm working on my seventh fight in in 14 months that's why i'm going at this strenuous pace but it's a uh, pedal to the metal i'm trying to get to the gold I'm trying to get to the ufc and and that you know real financial sustainability We're not giving him easy fights. You know, we're not, we don't hand pick. We're fighting the best guys on the East Coast right now. And now we're getting another undefeated guy, a local guy where people are afraid to fight. Jose Perez and Paul Capaldo is one of the best fights you could possibly put together in the CFSC right now. I love it. It shows the kind of fights that CFSC likes to make, which is to get you tested, 
to get you an opportunity to show people that you are ready for the next level. You got two fighters with stellar records, two fighters who look destined for the big time. A fight that honestly I think could have happened at Dana White's Contender Series. I mean, these are these type level of prospects. Instead, it's happening in the CFSC cage. It's a tough challenge for both fighters. Sometimes it's easy to get to that level. You just got to be prepared when you get there. And he understands that. He understands the work. And so he's not afraid when I call him up and say, hey, here's the opponent we got. And he's just like, sounds great. He's excited when they're tough. He's excited when it's a puzzle he's got to figure out. I get offered fights that like really excite me. I'm like, this one's going to get me into Valhalla. Like this one's going to open up the gates for me. And, and this is when I think of it. Paul Capaldo is like, yeah, I think he's like, uh, I think me and him are like the best in our division. I think we're like, I'm that colossal titan on the jiu-jitsu spectrum of things, and he's the one who hits those exciting wheel kicks and the shines and the stand-up facet of the thing. So I really think that this one is similar to my other matchups where it's been kind of striker versus grappler, but I think that this one's just bigger. It's really just gonna boil down to who can kind of implement their will on each other because both of these athletes, I, I think, are destined for, for the top promotions. CFFC has gotten an insane amount of people last year into the Contender Series. A couple people have just been sent straight into the UFC and however they want to do it, I am <laughs> I am A-OK. -okay. If Uncle Dana calls me and says, uh, Contender Series, Jose will be at the Contender Series. If he says you're going straight in on two weeks notice and you're fighting a stud, then guess what Jose's doing on two weeks notice? I'm fighting a stud. You know, the matchmakers at the USC and these other organizations, you know, they really watch those events and you get a chance to really shine on this big platform. And, you know, when you win a CFSC title, for instance, I mean, those champions are getting phone calls right away from top tier organizations, whether it be the USC, Bellator, PFL, one championship. I mean, they are seeing this talent develop in front of them. But even if you don't win a title, I mean, you're still getting this fantastic platform, great production qualities, and you're getting a chance to really make a name for yourself and just get identified by these bigger organizations. Any way, shape, or form that I can get into there and, you know, cut this uh, cut this trip, this little, this this is the Band-Aid part, this, the regional portion is tough, it's, it wears on you, there's no, uh, like I said, the finances aren't there, so it's, you're usually a lot of the guys who are doing this are working and fighting, so trying to get past this so beggars can't be choosers. I'm an opportunistic eater. I'm going to get in however he lets me in. You know, when you daydream in your car, you kind of think about yourself and everyone has this idea of where they fit in the world. And I could go be a carpenter and, and I'm not saying these generic, you know, carpenter or a grocer at a, at a store. And there's nothing wrong with those jobs, but there is something wrong with it if I don't have passion for it. There is someone out there who's an excellent carpenter and maybe they can just notch things together in ways that no one else can. That's the way they shine their light. Their light shines bright in that facet. My light doesn't shine bright there because I don't understand it and I don't have a passion for it. So I fight because I know in my heart that this is what I'm supposed to do. That anything else I do aside from this, I might thrive, I might do okay at, but my light shines brightest when I do what I'm meant to do. And this right now is exactly what I'm meant to do. And I'm desperately fighting to try to keep that dream alive because I have children and they need financial stability, but I want my dream. So, so we're trying to make those two things work together. And I want to teach my daughters that they should go for what they want to go for. They should do what they want to do regardless of what they get paid, regardless of what anybody says, uh, regardless of what you like, someone else out there also likes that. There's a demographic of people who will resonate with what you're doing. And, and I just think that I wanna encourage myself to do it. And I think the best way to encourage my daughter to do it is to do it myself.